Well, initially I didn't even know that risk assessments were carried out. I came across my own risk assessment by mistake. I asked for a copy of my care plan from an administrator and then the last few pages came out. Um, I'd lost my original copy. By that time I'd been in services for two years, so that's quite a long time, and I'd never been involved. I don't know if it's relevant, but I remember when I saw it, the thing that really struck me um, was the question, is this person safe to visit at home? And they'd put unknown. Um, and it made me wonder what sort of person they thought I was. Another thing was where it said on the form, arson risk, yes or no, and they ticked the yes box. And that related to something very minor that happened 30 years ago. I wasn't actually being involved in the process at all. And it horrified me because that related to something 30 years previously and there was no context around that. So it upset me to think that people really thought I was an arson risk and for all people knew I'd set fire to a ward or something. But by that time I'd got used to looking at documentation that presented me in a certain light. And what I found was that when I saw a new healthcare professional, it seemed hard for them to relate to the paper version and the person sitting in front of them. I remember a comment when one said, I feel much more hopeful having spoken to you than when I read the documentation. I also remember on a number of occasions that a decision would be made without me being present. Some staff would come in and remove items such as my dressing gown cord and the lead for my radio. I know people have to wear plastic gloves, but it's just etched on my memory how two staff came in wearing these and them saying they needed to do a room search, then proceeding to open drawers and stuff without explaining the reasons behind it. And it made me feel angry, like I was in prison and being punished. And more worryingly of all, it made me more focused on the environment, to finding ways of harming myself or killing myself. And it took me quite a while to realise I was getting into quite a difficult situation in reacting to that. It was about control. And it's difficult to explain, but it was almost like, I'm going to show you, I'm going to win this battle. And in fact, it can be really dangerous and unhelpful because if your whole interaction is about staff removing anything they consider you might be able to harm yourself with and without any other discussions such as why you might be feeling like that or any other discussion about what might make the things feel better. The other thing that I think is quite strange is when I was put on 15 minute observations they never said that was happening but I worked it out as someone was peering through the window as opposed to the hourly checks. When you're really distressed, it can feel really comforting if you know they're doing it and the reasons why they're doing it. And they're doing it for the best intentions. To know someone does care about you and that they're checking up on you. I feel quite, I'd feel quite comforted by that. If they don't tell you they're doing it and they just do it, you actually feel you're being treated in a more criminal way, like they're just trying to catch you out. When the experience feels like that again, it set people into really unhelpful interactions. I thought, if I really wanted to do something, I'd just time the time they'd just left and make sure I did it in that time. I remember feeling very cared for and very touched when one member of staff just said, I was wondering if hospital might be the best place for you. What do you think? And it stood out from previous experiences where I wasn't involved in any decision making or even asked about what I thought. Another experience was when, as part of a risk assessment appraisal, the decision was made to move me to a room nearer the nursing station. I remember feeling so low I couldn't get off the bed and they came in with rubber gloves and started putting my possessions into plastic sacks and I felt even more upset. But when the nurse came in and said, we're only trying to help you, 
I remember feeling quite supported by that. From my perception, up until that point, it hadn't felt like help or care. And I think the point I'm trying to make is how your experience can just switch quite fundamentally depending on how it's presented. And then I remember feeling quite comforted by being closer to the nurse's station as I'd been feeling so frightened. And I think it sometimes can feel so much more like you've got a security guard on your case, following you around, waiting for you to do something wrong if it's not presented in the right way. If people explain why they're doing certain things, it can make you feel quite cared for and protected in a certain way. And that, in turn, has a big impact on what follows. And I think the image of the security guard watching you, well, most people can relate to how that feels. If people are simply monitoring and not interacting, it can feel very similar to that. That statement had a big impact, and I still remember it four years later. It struck a chord. That, Do you think hospital is the safest place? If put in this way, it connected me with my own need to take personal responsibility. And I think it's true, if you're unwell and scared and not sure what you're doing, it can help you regain control and not give up. To not take on the attitude that they're mental patients and this is what they do, and we have to keep checking up on them to stop them from doing these things. And I think really to try and involve people in a process of how they can help keep themselves safe. And also to share perceptions of risk and to actually be really open about the concerns to use a collaborative approach which encourages responsibility. I think that's one of the first things that can go. To take personal responsibility and to take control of what's going on in your own mind. Regaining personal responsibility and regaining control have been crucial in my own recovery. And I think they're the first things to go when you have a risk assessment procedure where you have people filling in forms. When I was working as a peer support worker and I myself was going round with a 15-minute checklist, peering through the door and seeing that they were still breathing, I felt a sense of relief and, right, job done. When I reflect reflected on that, I was quite shocked at my own failure to talk to patients, if only for a few minutes. I changed that and started and started talking to them. People are busy, especially when there are a lot of 15 minute observations going on. They don't have to have long conversations just to ask somebody how they are and to offer to return later if they need someone to talk to. There's so much emphasis on events that are always happening. I can see how staff who are feeling overloaded just tick off rather than taking the opportunity to talk for a few minutes. Staff are responding to serious incidents and trying to complete sets of paperwork. They might feel they're making more work for themselves by talking to someone rather than just ticking off the sheet. And so the situations I experienced were all or nothing, either no response and no interaction or very full on and an over-the-top response. It's important for staff to know that a few minutes of conversation can make such a huge difference. There's a lot of anxiety as a peer support worker or as a nurse that someone may do something when you're on shift, that somehow you may be blamed or made to feel responsible for that. A way to relieve that anxiety is to tick the sheets. I personally feel that's a bit of an illusion because you do know that people will and do harm themselves on wards, even with that observation. A few minutes talking and engaging and really seeing how they are is, in my opinion, how to really manage risk by involving them and engaging with them. 
lot of the staff were very caring, but it does get lost somehow. You can't see it because of the paperwork. You know, and the way things are organised.